a weird film thing. Number one, I guess. Hello. Hello. I... Can I... I have a weird question for you. Oh, God. <laughs> Sunday. It is. Um, Sunday afternoon. Well, it's the per perfect time for a question like this, I promise. I want to ask about um, things. Creative stuff. That's, that sounds sinister, but go on. <laughs> um, well, I don't know. I wanted to ask about... Uh, like, writing stuff, and, like, creativity, and, well, like, creative blocks and things, and when you feel, you know, super, super weird and creative, and how that comes out, and how that manifests in both directions. Uh, okay. Okay. I, I, I could do that. I could do that. <laughs> I, I'll start in a place that we, like, I think we can both, uh relate to is short stories um, yeah we've both uh, written a few um, because of our, our our group of friends uh, do our little yeah. short story competition um, we wh what happens when you write one of those when you get the prompt um, how does it come about in your head I think the main part of the recipe is uh procrastination <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I, I mainly just um, sit with it in my head for a while soft slowly like brewing it over yeah until over the course of a few weeks some ideas come through and then and yeah. I sort of pounce on the ones I like the most and expand on them yeah so you like have uh do you like have a bank of ideas already there in your head or do you sort of come up with them for the prompt or do you twist an idea that you already have into um into the prompt? Um often I do yeah, often I do have uh banks of ideas. I mean my the first the first one we wrote for our first competition was a a, a universe I already had in my head yeah. prior to the prior to our short story competition thing so with that one yeah certainly um, that was a pretty an, a, an idea I already had that I yeah I twisted as you say into into working with the prompt creating a story with the prompt yeah uh, but then others yeah others have come from yeah just bring the idea and, and considering different options throwing away others and I've been pouncing on one that focusing on one that or two that speak to me. Yeah. Some of our friends, uh, who will remain nameless for this, um, uh, have said that they basically have to think of an idea for the prompt. Um, yeah. They, they, get, they get the prompt for the sort of competition and the deadline, and they're like, well, I've got to think of something new for this prompt. And that's, yeah. that's always been like a crazy thing for me. Because in my head, I'm like, I have 50 ideas ready to go. And those 50 are, like, malleable into anything. They're, like, the proto-idea. And then someone yeah. goes, oh, here's the one-word prompt. And you go, oh, this, this is what this is for. And you go, okay, I can use this. I have no stories specifically for the prompts that I match with a prompt. But I do have settings and universes. I, I have, like... I have like a catalog of uh, potential, yeah, set, uh, like ideas, like a vampire apocalypse or s spies in World War Two or, or a generation ship going through space. I have like settings that I have set up, and then I think of a story for the prompt using a setting that I, I already had. Yeah, 
yeah, it's uh, it's sort of like that for me where you have those worlds and then uh, the first one I did was uh, basically a sort of trial run for a story I had as like, well, let's see if we can, um, you know, let's see if we can write this in a short story before we write it any longer. Um, and then every single um, story after that, I decided to, as well as writing the main story that I would submit, I would also write a second story in that world about those characters. Um, so I like have, and I've not done it for every single one, but I've done it for like quite a few of them. So I like have five short stories all set in this one world because it's a world and characters and sort of an idea that's fascinated me. And yes. I was like, well, this is an excuse to have like a prompt that I could put into it. And so, uh, yeah, so like one of them's a romance story, one of them's like an action sort of vignette. For me, create, it's always there. It's like, there's always a story to be told. I just need a trigger for it, if that makes sense. I need the, t- okay. I need a trigger to be pulled. And I don't know if that's anyone yeah. else's, I don't know if that's your experience or, um, or if you like go, oh, I think this prompt would be better for this world. For me, it's like, there's a subconscious link. Like, I cannot distinguish. It is, I hear the prompt and go, okay, I know what I'm doing. Like, it is, and I've changed my idea sometimes, and I've changed, I've written like half a story and thought, this doesn't work. Yeah. But I've almost always had it where a spark hits kindling. Um, yeah. It's like, everything's ready to go, it just needs that one touch. And, I don't know, that's, that's how I've always felt about things like that. Yeah, I think for me it's a little bit of a slower process. Mm. As a, yeah, as I said, I, some of them I took ages to like really gather my mind to and go over the prompt again and again and again to find out. The, the one that comes to mind is the um, uh, the, um, the 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 one with the spring cycle. Um, oh yeah. When I did the story about. Yeah. Um, the, the, sh- the f- s- multiple short stories within a short story. <laughs> yes, <laughs> most yeah. Pretent- most pretentious thing I've ever written. Uh, I mean, you have, uh, you've not read some of my stuff, so you're all right. <laughs> With the, the, the different um, things going through a change in their lives, where from a, a daffodil growing to a, a, a spaceship pilot killing himself to, like, a detective. It was... It was that was that was completely new. Nothing there came from anything I previously had. That that took me walking through the park in Glasgow multiple times, brewing the, the concept and yeah. thinking about it deeply. I mean, as well is some of the um, some of the ones that we you know we, we we read all the one you know it's a voting thing, so we all read all or try and read all the sort of submissions we get in you know for our. Our, that our friends have written um, you know and then everyone votes on what's the best one um, the one that always um, fascinates me is for me like storytelling and sort of quite literal storytelling comes I don't want to say naturally but that's just how I think which is why I've gone into like you know film stuff and scripts and you know cause scripts is you're writing literal just literally what's happening on the page and there's very little subtext yeah. sometimes. Uh, that's when the directing comes in and you choose how to shoot something and you things like that. And I can do that, but it's like a very literal and quite mechanical process. The one, yeah. the one that always gets me is when our friends um, do poems. And to me, yes. poetry is like another world it's 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 a world that i've rarely dipped my feet in because obviously you learn poetry at school and you go oh rhyming you know gonna rhyme every line with the previous one things you know rhyming and then you like read some of the most famous poems in the world and you go it rhymes but then it doesn't and there's no rules and it's really fluid and you think yeah poetry is is as i think is much about the uh, the rhythm and the flow and the imagery 
as much as it is about rhyming and, and, and any of those elements can be like picked up and put down to do um, to, to try and do what you're trying to do writing a poem yeah it's because I I've tried uh, I was actually writing a big long like feature script that I've got and I've had in the works for ages and ages and ages now I said it's been a, like just over a year yeah uh, um I got to this point and there was a big speech that the character gave and it's actually changed since I initial since what I'm about to talk about but I wanted them to sort of explain something in this grand term and they're a character who can see you know see the future and see the past and you know they're sort of psychic and it's like does that matter does it not and things and I what I did was I was sat there writing and I thought this is a poem and it's the first time I've ever thought this needs to be a separate piece of art. Yeah. And so I tried my hand at this piece of poetry, like, really recently, in the past couple months, and, like, it was so hard. Because it was yes. like, how do you structure this? Like, you can't... I'm notorious for when we do stories. I submit a wall of text. Like, it is so dense how I write. And then just letting go of that and thinking, oh, maybe, like... Five words in this line is like too much. Is it was bonkers? It was so hard to write. I think I think if I was to write some poetry, I think it would have to. I would have to think about it less than I think about uh, uh, writing prose. I think I would get in my head too much, and I think I would have to just come up with an idea and then just sit back and write the first draft like from the heart just let it flow out to me from my heart I think that's the only way I could do it and then go back and tidy up in the second draft to begin at the beginning the beginning of what everything me humans today the week, dinosaurs, 1066. Life, in its every form, we start at the beginning. Long ago, there was Gaia, circling her mother's star. A newborn, rapidly growing. She was radiant with the heat of celestial birth. She cooled in the cold darkness, her only light that of her mother star so far away. The beginning of her cold existence alone. Or so she thought. Her sister, Thea, so close in their paths, drawing on each other. They danced together for what we would call forever. Mostly apart, but when together their interactions with each other were so intimate. As they danced their dance across the plains, upon the surface of them was beginning to form something. A curtain of gases coming from their elemental mantle below. Where once sisters saw each other's faces, they would no longer see past their own cloud. But they felt when the other was near. The two sisters passed by, feeling their siblings closer than ever before. But this time, something changed on the surface. A spark. A charge through an acid that had rained down from the thick veil of clouds. Acids with potential for more. This spark, just that potential. And what was once not became... A cell. Singular. Alone. But not for long. Soon there was... Cells. Cells covering a lake. Cells covering all lakes. Oceans. Land. 
each adapting to survive where it was. Those that died, died. Those that lived, lived on in others. A planet alive. Simple, but alive. It might be asked which of the siblings felt this spark. The strong and rigid Gaia. Or the quick, lean Thea. It doesn't matter. As despite the spark, it could have all ended there. After their years of dancing, the sisters met. Their paths brought to a singular point. Meeting for the first time, together at last. Gaia was badly wounded. The scars in her body were more than she'd ever known. Posture changed forever, her spin uneven. Thea was gone in seconds. A dance across millions of years ended. Gaia was alone, surrounded by the cooling remains of her dead sister. She pulled her sister's remains towards her, over time repairing her own wounds with them, becoming whole from what had been broken and lost. The spark that had once filled an entire planet, there was nothing left. Almost nothing left. Almost. A cell, singular, alone, but not for long. Adapting to survive where it had been, it had survived this. Soon it was more. Cells covering lakes, oceans, land. Those that died, died. Those that lived, lived on in others. Lived on in more. Lived on in everything. What remained of Thea slowly became more. Luna was an only child. Alone in this ever lonely dark. Gaia took her in as her own, more than an aunt, not quite a mother, a guardian of her little Luna. She had left, all she had left, of the sister she had danced for so long with. She stayed with her always, guiding her safe on around her mother. As time moved on, Gaia grew and changed. She became more than just the sister she had been. Within her were pieces and fragments of Thea. Those fragments, not within her, had become Luna, the child of them both. She was never truly gone. Gaia had become Earth. Now, Looking down on the world was the child Luna, older than her mother ever was. We are bathed in her light in our darkest of times. Life took hold on this crooked sister, a cell singular, alone, the ghost of a sister long ago. I think if I tried to plan it too much, it, I would just get too much in my own head about the the rhythm and the rhyme and stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 crazy because, I mean, this one I did, um, I actually ended up finishing it, which is like a rarity for like art, <laughs> for do creating stuff for me. Um, I finished it, and it was like four pages long. It's like a really long poem for you know. Oh my god! Compared to some poems, I was like, I finished it. It's four pages of A four long. I sat there and went, yeah, this is what I wanted to tell. Uh, I have no idea if it's good or not. Um, I, oh, I want to ask you about something else, uh, another sort of artistic thing. Uh, and this one's a little bit closer to me. This one I can relate to a bit more. 
Yeah. I can't. I I don't know. I can't remember if you have done much of this. Uh, I know. I know that your mum and stepdad uh, do this. Uh, it's photography. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. And like. I, I didn't know what you were gonna say. I the only thing that came to my mind was cooking. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean, that's coming up later. I do want to talk about cooking as well. Okay. Um, but, uh, I mean, we can talk about cooking now if you want. Doesn't matter what order we do it in. Doesn't really care. I, I don't mind. I mean, uh, both, both are, are similar in the fact that you and my parents know a lot about them and I'm terrible at them. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know a lot. <laughs> I just get... Well, you know more than me about cooking and you know a lot more than me about photography. <laughs> But, like, I, I, I sort of, with cooking especially, I mean, the only reason I know as much as I do it was because I was literally forced to learn it when I was 18 and I did yeah. two months in the kitchen. Uh, yeah. Like, I worked in a pub. Uh, it's like a quite a good pub c- kitchen and I was the salad chef, so I learned all about, like, you know, doing salads, which is not something I eat all that often, so that was so helpful to me. <laughs> But like, I do know, I I yeah. do know how to make dressing. Uh, when yeah. we're like mixing, yeah, mixing oil and, and and vinegar and water and herbs and stuff. Yeah, you. I mean, it was while we were at university. Uh, you were the one that introduced me to the idea of, because before that, you know, I'd worked in the kitchen and then I'd come to university essentially, and then we were like hanging out a lot more, and I think you'd started making dinner one day. And you'd like, and it was the first time I'd seen someone do this because uh, my parents are like really precise, so they have like a schedule for what they want to eat most of the time. So they know yeah. what they, I I know when I was living at home, I knew what they were gonna every every night. I knew what meal I was having, um, yeah, uh, which frustrated me in some ways. But then at university, I was round at your house and you're like, oh, I've got to start making dinner if you that's alright. I was like, oh, I'm going soon, but I just want to keep chatting. Uh, and I think you chopped up a lot of garlic and onions and shoved yeah. them in a pan. I was like, oh, what are you making? And you learned, looked at me and went, I don't know. <laughs> and I was like, then why did you start cooking? <laughs> and you were like, well, you put some onions in a pan and some garlic and like you decide. Yeah, I mean, yeah you can't go wrong with a base of, uh, of onions and garlic. No, but that was like the first time that I like realised. I was like, oh, you can just like... Make it the yeah. fuck up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My my mum calls it uh, a crumuch. I don't know why she calls it that because I've n- I've not met anyone else who's calls it that. It's it's the name of a a village in Pembrokeshire, <laughs> but, <laughs> where it's just a sort of made up mix of food. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you just um, if you put yeah onions and garlic in it, then you put some sort of starch, some sort of yeah. Mm. Potato or or uh, pasta or rice and tomatoes or pasta or mushrooms or whatever something like you want. that. Yeah, you can put yeah, anything you, you with can it. Just, yeah, you can just create something that you like the taste of and <laughs> like the texture of. Yeah, it's it's crazy that you can like because I some of my favorite dishes that I that I make for myself because living alone you get to just make whatever the hell you want. Oh, I'll put this in here. No one's going to tell me not yeah. to do this. No I can... one's going to stop me. No one can stop me. <laughs> Which is good and bad sometimes. Like, 90% <laughs> of the time for me it's good. And then, like, I have the 10% of meals where I'll take a bite and go, oh, I immediately regret doing this. Yes, yeah. But I eat it. Well, I get yeah. penance. So It's quite interesting. Because um, working in a kitchen before I, like, massively cooked anything um, yeah. for myself, it was crazy because I, it was put into my brain about like um, presentation of food, which is like a whole other yeah. world that I just don't. Yeah. I don't think about even today, but like. I no, I never engage in that. But, but if, I do appreciate it when I have it. Yeah. And when I see it at restaurants. Yeah, and it was like it was crazy because I was like I was putting it for my first week. I was like, here's how you make this salad, for example. You'd start with this, like, base salad, uh, and every yeah. dish that I would make would be, like, a sort of seafood thing or the occasional, like, uh, goat's cheese salad, stuff like that. But it all 
revolved around this one specific salad where they were like, okay, you put this in here and then you put this, this, and then sprinkle this on there, things like that. And if you make that, that is essentially a side salad. And then if you add to that, it becomes a starter or like a main course or something like that. And I was like, oh, that's, you know, I was given the instructions of do this and I was like, oh, that's fine. And then... Like, after the first week, I had made this salad and the head chef came up to me, who I didn't particularly like, but that's that's another story. And she sort of went, you're doing it wrong. And I was like, well, what do you mean? I'm, I'm doing the salad. She went, well, all, all the ingredients are in there, so you're, like, technically correct. But look at it. And I, like, looked at it and went, it looks fine. And she went, yeah, but it, it's fine. It's not good. It doesn't look good. Yeah. And I was like, oh... Oh no! Oh! <laughs> oh, I have created a monster. <laughs> no. How dare you! <laughs> but it was like it was like the first introduction to um, oh oh god I've got to make something look good to present to someone yeah. I can't just throw it together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. I no I I personally it's weird because personally I always say. But I don't care about presentation. Yeah. And I sort of, part of me is like, oh yeah, I would be completely fine with doing things the old, old fashioned way of just sticking a stew in a, in a wooden dish and thrusting in front of it. But then I do, I do appreciate but it. But that, that, that would be aesthetically cool if I was I given guess, it. I guess, I guess. <laughs> I'm sort of just imagining myself in a, in a pirate bar in, in, in Cornwall in the 1700s. I mean, let's go back to what I wanted to talk about earlier with photography. Um, which is, I think, something people overestimate my ability in. Because <laughs> I, I have a camera, uh, which, which I do use, and I'm obviously using right now. Um, but I bought it not for photography, I bought it for filming. And then I'm like, I guess I can take photos, sure. Did you see the photo at our friend's wedding where it's of the first dance and it's the main subject of the photo is you taking a photo of the first dance. I've not looked at those photos, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still editing those my photos because I, oh, okay. I have the photo. I have this, like, per- there's, like, three or four perfect photos I have of them because I, like, ran around taking photos of them and I've got these three perfect photos and I'm just like, I need to get these done and yeah. I, I should. I, I'm going to do it. Photography is, like, really weird. Um... Where it's like, you you take the photo and then everyone goes, oh, that's a great photo. And you go, yeah, 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 yeah. But the amount of processing behind it is like, you have to sit there for like, and this isn't long, but like, each photo takes about 20 minutes to sit there and just make sure that's how you want it to look. You've already taken the photo, but it just takes so much more to just... Yeah. The, um... Take the I fo- don't know the word. The, 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 the yeah... The, filters and stuff. Like I'm sat, oh, I'm, I'm beyond filters. Saturation and stuff. Yeah, I'm sat there with sliders and like, is the black level right? And is the is, uh, is the white balance? Do I want it more colourful? Do I want it more cold? Do I want it this? Yeah. And you sit there and you do something and you go, no, that's not right. So you throw the slider back. You know, I I wasn't the official photographer. I was there as a guest, but at our friend's yeah. wedding, I was asked to take photos, and I was more yes. than happy to do that. But, um. It was like, and I'm sort of grappling with this now, and I'm going to sort of say this to them. I was like, well, these aren't going to be wedding photography photos. These are going to be my photos of your wedding. Yeah. Because I, there's a sort of style of wedding photography that I've seen, and I, you know, I've been at weddings, and you know, they do the photos. And like, everything's sort of white and green. You know, sort of, everything is sort of tinted green in a way. And I can't explain it, but that's like every wedding photography I've ever seen is like this tinted green. And I'm like, but that's not how I see the world. I see the world in that vivid blues and reds and things like that. And I want to bring yeah. that sort of really vivid colours out. And I'm afraid that I'll do it and I'll do it to their photos. And it's like, oh, that's uh, they're like, oh, thanks. But could you green so them? Vivid. Could you green them up a little bit? <laughs> Wait, so why, I, I haven't noticed this. Why do people green green wedding photos up? I don't know, but it's this sort of green 
hue to like wedding photos and maybe it's just because people go outdoors and you know they're outside in the nature you know when they have the couples and I think they did have yeah. this uh, you know they had another wedding photographer do it them properly but these sort of photos they're always they're like a little bit washed out and I never feel they're saturated enough and like yeah. I want it to be like I'm stood there looking at the subjects of this photo yeah, then, I think I think maybe they're trying to get like a sort of uh, a fairy tale nostalgia looking back feel. Yeah. Not a sort of real there feel. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe, but I don't know. I always because I we went on a we went on holiday last year um, to Devon, and I took a bunch of photos uh, for those, and I don't know if you've seen them, but like, I wanted the vivid colours. I wanted like the blue of the ocean. And, sort of yes. yellow of the sand and you know if there's green I'm not saying I'm I'm, I'm not saying I don't like the colour green I'm just saying like everything seems to be like this what this sort of washed out green in wedding photos and I'm like yeah. well that's not how I see the world I don't see the world in washed out green no no I don't you're know you're not in a Matrix movie no no I'm not <laughs> I'm gonna bring up something that we've definitely talked about before to do with oh, photography okay. it's to do with photography but it's sort of to do yeah. with the life uh, I don't say lesson, but like moral. Um, okay. I think I know where this is going. Actually. Yeah, yeah, maybe. But there was a film from like I think ten years ago, eleven years ago now, um, called "The Secret Life of Walter Mitty" um, by Ben yes. Stiller. Yeah. And. I this I mean this is just sort of so it's not photography as such but it like it's like just art in general sometimes and especially like taking photos there's a moment at the end of that film where his his whole thing is he's trying to chase down this photographer because uh, yeah, the photographer yeah. took this one specific photo and the ending is this photographer saying he sat there and he's got this camera trap sort of set up this really long lens and he's like trying to find this like, He's really? in the, they're in the Himalayas, aren't they? Yeah, uh, and trying to find this elusive, like, big cat called the Ghost Cat. And it comes out, and they, like, have a look at it, and the photographer sort of says, what I'm sure is, like, going back to it, a very profound, you know, very sort of not as deep as you think it is when you're 16 phrase. And sort of Ben Stiller's character goes, are you gonna are you gonna take the photo? And the photographer says no. Sometimes it's I that's just for me. Yeah. And it's really hard to like balance that with um especially someone who like wants to do film stuff and like visual art and things. There's this drive to like create stuff all the time. Yeah. And especially now with all the sort of push with like content and things like that, I don't like that. I, I always find that when I'm behind the camera, I'm not involved in what's going on. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. The, the, it's funny, yeah, you should say that because I do, yeah. I, I, <laughs> you, as you know, I do agree with that sentiment. Like, my parents are big into photography and yeah. they've continuously tried to push photography onto me. And. <laughs> The reason I've never got into it is because I feel that often when you are trying to, you're thinking about set getting this perfect shot, you are missing out on being alive in the moment, being yeah. there. And I've, I've had that experience in, in on a safari where I was worrying about taking a picture of some lions or something and... I suddenly realised that I just like missed an opportunity to just be there and look at the lions in their natural habitat. Yeah. And I'm just like, why, <laughs> why, why should I? Like, life is there to be lived. Yeah. And sometimes you need to not think yeah. about setting up this piece of art yeah. for future. Instead, be there and live yeah. that. I mean, look, this is going to be a little revealing, but like. We've both been lucky with how we've been brought up in, you know, yeah. decent, you know, families who, you know, we've been abroad on holiday between us 
all over the world and a lot of places and we've been incredibly lucky to do that and like the older I get the real the more I realize how lucky I am that that's the case yeah. um but I think my my parents definitely have that um one parent in particular um that you know has that sort of mentality of like ah oh, this is going to be great for the slideshow when we get home and I so I again I as much as I like creative stuff and visual medium and photography there's always this thing of like I'm missing out when I do that yeah. and you know and I I I don't know I I I just have that sort of feeling sometimes where it's like you know we were on going back to when we were on holiday with photos when I brought my camera. I felt like I was taking photos that day, not, you know, when we went over, yeah. we went for that walk over to the beach and we did some cool things on that beach. We found like a little cave and tried to like go as far in yeah. as we could and stuff like that. And that was cool. Rolling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I enjoyed that and I did like that, but it was so much better when I gave my camera to our friend. Yeah. And I was able to go and do those things because he wanted to like test yeah. the, test the camera and do some photography stuff and I had it and I went, look, have have some fun with it. But I was able to go and do those things. Instead of worrying, I'm going to break my camera, you know, I've got to take the photos in a safe place and things like that. Yeah. I just got to live a little bit instead of just take photos. Yeah. There's, there's another topic in this, in this topic, which is, I argue with mum about, which is, like, so waiting until there's a perfect opportunity or uh, when there's like no people around or even cutting people like strangers out of photographs yeah um, that's like essentially where you're sort of putting it photography as a creation of a piece of art above the other use of it which is like creating a snapshot of reality and, and a, a snapshot of history yeah and I, I'm much more in favour of of, of getting the reality of the situation of, of just yeah. forgetting about oh there's people talking strangers talking in this photo yeah but like actually snapping reality and not yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I completely get that oh I want a really nice picture of this bay you know with my friends sort of out, out, out of shot but I much prefer looking back at the photos that I took of you and our friends and I, I very much uh, I think you you were you were experienced to this on the other on the other side and in front of the lens. I would run up and just be like, "I'm gonna take a photo of you in two seconds." I just take a photo, and that's the photo that I've taken of you or someone yeah. else. And I much prefer this sort of like, you know, I don't want to pose people and things, which is ironic for someone who's just filmmaking stuff. I'm <laughs> when I'm directing, I'm actually quite like specific about how I'm directing. I'm like, I I talk to actors. I say, "I'm gonna let you do your thing." But especially if we're in a close-up, I might end up having to go, I need you this way, I need you that way, because I have something in my head. Um, yeah, yeah. But when photography is involved, it's the complete opposite. I don't want I don't want posing. I don't want anything like that. I want to experience um, reality. I want to take a photo of someone how they are, yeah. not yeah. me going, could you stand like this? No, it's that sort of push and pull of what you can and can't do. Yeah. Um, and it goes all the way back to like stories and things that we write. It's like, how much of my life do I put into a story and how much of, you know, people that I know do I put into a story? Because like, if you put too much of someone in a story and they read it, they're going to go, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> like, why did you do that? And they're a terrible person. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, and you go, well, I was getting frustrations out, and you're like, well, why didn't you talk to me about it? And you go, I don't know, I can't express my emotions well. <laughs> it's interesting to think about stuff like that, where it's, um, it's that kind of, like, discussion of what you can and can't, or should or shouldn't put in creativity and art, and, like, where, where it belongs, because I have, I have accidentally, um, I have accidentally um, written a short story that one of our friends um, they went, this is incredibly accurate, and it was about 
it was about a certain kind of parental abuse. Yeah. Um, I think you remember the story, the, the story with the girl with the jetpack. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one of our friends came up to me afterwards, or it might have been just when we were discussing them, you know, doing the voting, and they said, yeah. you nailed what it's like to have an abusive parent. And I, thankfully, yeah. you know, I've not yeah. had that experience, but I sort of, I tried to imagine it, and I thankfully yeah. got it right <laughs> in a way that, like, yeah. Someone came up to him and went, your art it mattered in a way. Mm. And I was like that. I, I like felt good, but at the same time I was like, I felt bad because I was like, well, I wrote this as like the worst case scenario for this. And then someone <laughs> goes, that happened to me. And you go, my lord. Oh, it's hard. Yeah. I do think it's a struggle writing, like creating art about something you've not experienced yourself and how incredibly risky that is yeah and i do i do worry like because it's like on one hand i, I like I, I like a world where there's lots of there's like diverse stories with diverse characters but on the other hand i probably shouldn't and can't write good art that's about people who <laughs> people living in this world who aren't yeah like white british guys <laughs> well i do agree with that but i also think that you know we you know we know people who are you know not straight not white not yeah. cisgendered and stuff like that and not you know not male as well <laughs> yeah. um you know i think as long as you're respectful of those people like i did yeah. A short film which had a non-binary character in it and I was like really careful to just write them as a person yeah and I was just I was sat there I was like I don't want to write this person as I don't want to write them as non-binary and yeah. when casting I got a non-binary actor and they were fantastic and they said look if you want to change anything if you want to do something a certain way tell me um, yeah. thankfully as well the cinematographer for that was non-binary uh, so I sort of <laughs> and we had a sort of uh, an a assistant director who was the one who keeps everyone on schedule was trans and they are fantastic, yeah. he's a fantastic person um, you were under supervision <laughs> yeah <laughs> the white guy was under supervision from uh, yeah. <laughs> from people and was like yeah. I, I don't I don't think I had a. I don't think I had a moment where someone had to tell me off for doing anything. Yeah, because it's like a, there is a balance you have to put where uh, with writing like um, an abused minority with like the fact treating them as a real like a, just a normal person who is just a normal person trying to live their lives. Yeah, but also understanding that their lives are a place where they have to constantly face prejudice. So, yeah, their lives are different from ours. Yeah, Com like completely. It's... Um, going back sorry, to something earlier, it's funny that because the reason I chickened out of the last uh, short story competition yeah. is it's because I had an idea, I had a everything set up, a concept and a story and everything set up, but it was about our friendship group, and oh. I really got in my, I, I really got in my head about it, I was really <laughs> freaking, I was like really struggling of like, I, I, of how I could possibly do that. Yeah, um, it's, and it's interesting, because like, portray real people that I know. Yeah, that, that is, that is sort of very... Again, it's hard when you when someone is like so, something so real. Like you're gonna have to write someone you know, and in yeah. that situation, more than likely they were gonna read it. You know, they, they were gonna yeah. read it, and so it's like you have to make sure you're doing it right, or you know, you don't portray them in that way, and are you are you gonna offend them even if they, you don't mean it and things like that. Like, yeah, it's crazy. Simultaneous, it, it, it was about that, but it was also about getting a pet velociraptor so <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
So it wasn't that realistic, but it was I, including real people. I think I know who so. it was about then. I think I know who that was about. <laughs> I mean, I, I, yeah, I've stopped. I've stopped stories. That I've been writing and scripts and things like that because um, you know they were um, about real people, um, yeah. or they were about experiences that I didn't have. Um, yeah. You know, there was one about. You know, and it was very sympathetic towards this. It was about, you know, immigration and sort of anti-immigrant violence that happened. You know, it's sort of like a sort of big crime thriller about that. And I sort of stopped after, like, the first ten pages of this script and went, I can't... This isn't my story. Yeah. This isn't me. Like, I, I'm, I'm writing... I'm, you know, as much as I'm going to be sympathetic towards it, I'm going to be writing a non-realistic outsider's perspective on this. And so I, yeah. like, have put that away and there are things like that. So it's it's gone. This is the struggle, it, this is the struggle yeah. Because you want... You feel these stories need to be told. But then I yeah. guess you you just... Uh, but then you think, I'm, I'm not really the one to tell it. Yeah. And you're like, I just hope someone who is the right person to tell this story tells yeah. this story. We have both... We both dabbled in music, in one way or another, right? In our lives. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I've been more of a music fan than a than a creator. I've done some creation, but I, yeah. I'm a massive music well, fan. But sure. you, you know, you, you know, I, I know you haven't played it in a while, but you, you play an instrument. Like you, you definitely do play an instrument. I've yeah, I've played it in the past. Yeah. <laughs> and you've like listened. It's in, it's, it's in the attic right now. Yeah. <laughs> But you've like listened to songs and like gone, oh, I like this bass line and things like that, and you know yes. you play it on oh, the bass, and so you appreciate that like instruments have their part, whereas sometimes people only listen to you know it's... music as a whole and you know the band. Right, or and the I song. always uh, because I've played bass guitar, I I always think about bass a lot. I always focus in on the bass riff of, of songs. Yeah. I you know I play guitar and I I still sort of do. Um, I'm looking at my guitar over there, uh, sat there, uh, my acoustic guitar. My acoustic guitar, which is mental, um, that I inherited from my mum, and then I asked her about it, and she went, oh, it's like, it was old when I got it, and so I looked up the age of it, and it was like, from like, the late 60s, 70s? So like, I own a guitar that is like, like, coming up on like, 55 years old and like that's just the it's guitar a... that I play <laughs> like <laughs> and it's, it's boasting, really... he's boasting I'm boasting yeah <laughs> there's something interesting about like play listening to music when you play it because you notice so much stuff in there about things yeah yeah um, how much thought has gone into it so much it's, it's a point that I'm often just overwhelmed and I often um just forget about the lyrics I'm really bad at listening to lyrics and yeah because I'm so I'm so focused on the instrumentation and the mixing and the uh, yeah the different yeah, yeah and the melody I, I don't yeah I don't listen to lyrics as well it's like I listen to the song and how it makes me feel and how the instruments make me feel and things like that and it's like but I, I and I see like lyrics as and a vocalist as another another instrument instrument yeah 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 it's like they're not I, I don't see them as anything more than that I see them as just that if that makes sense some, yeah sometimes when I really like so, there are definitely some songs that I really do think about the lyrics so I, I mean I have to get into the music first but then I come to the realisation that I also enjoy the lyrics yeah and I think that's and where like our favourite songs it's a mixture of both obviously you love the lyrics of one because yeah. they touch you but like yeah. at the same time I have songs that I adore I mean I'm I'm like country I like country music so I have to like put up with music that I I despise the lyrics to you know <laughs> <laughs> like especially like old you know 70s onwards like country music you got you got to wade through some you got to wade through some of that sort of um, backwards thinking, and there's some really great songs in there. But you're like, oh god, yeah. they're talking about Dick, old Dixie, and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. 
the, the yeah the one artist I have like that is Linda Skinner yeah. where I'm like oh my god especially the the new album that I think we both like the uh, God and Guns album well new it's like it's 2011 like, <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah yeah to be fair yeah it was just, it's like it's over a decade old but like yeah. Uh, new, newer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, that, that's definitely an album where I'm like, oh, I love the instrumentation so much, and the lyrics are horrible. <laughs> There's literally a song called "God and Guns" on there. I mean, it's the yeah. ti- it's the title track of the album. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. But I hate the lyrics. I disagree with <laughs> everything they say. Um, yeah. I would say like, when I get to like my t- favourite like my top 10 songs of the year there is often often like a, f- a third of them are there specifically because I also like the lyrics yeah um actually the, yeah looking at my top uh top fr- uh three of last year the the number one I don't know the lyrics to at all. <laughs> really it's entirely there because of the uh, the instrumentation and the melody. Yeah. But the number two and three are there because I like the instrumentation yeah. and the melody, but also the lyrics. Yeah. We've both tried our hand at like creating music in one way or another, and like yes, it is because like we you know you have picked it up like so incredibly well, and I have. Um, I have qualifications in <laughs> I have qualifications yeah. in music, which is um I have a GCSE, I have a music production A level, um, with one song that I produce that I'm so incredibly proud of and play to literally everyone I ever meet. Um, yeah. House of the Rising Sun. <laughs> yeah, my my version of House yeah. of the Rising Sun, which I just yeah. adore because I'm like, this is this is how I've heard it in my head. And yeah. I've put it in so many things because I own the rights to that song, so I can just shove it anywhere. Because <laughs> um, everyone else did. I remember when we were doing that music tech thing. Everyone else did these um, um, these songs that were like covers, and I was like, "Well, I want to do a cover, sort of." So I sort of based it on someone else's House of the Rising Sun. Um, yeah. I sort of based it on that and made it a bit more jazzy, and then realized. Oh well, it's House of the Rising Sun. No one owns the instrumentation. To no, no one owns the rights to the song. It's like a classical. To the, me- to, the me- to the melody, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and the lyrics. Yeah, and so like, oh, it's my version. I own the rights to this, so I've shoved it anywhere that I can. <laughs> <laughs> and I, yeah, but it's like, it's so interesting knowing about music, and then trying to take that step to create music. Because yeah. you realise how hard that is. Yes. Because you do have to consider the, the all those different factors, the melody, uh, the instrumentation, the mixing, yeah. and sometimes the, uh, the lyrics and the, and the vocals. Yeah. And you have to think about all of them <laughs> before you have a finished product. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I, obviously, I know nothing about technical. Almost nothing. <laughs> I mean, I barely know anything. I, I can, I, what I know, I've like basically self taught myself in like audio yeah. editing and things like that over the years. You know, I, I have degrees, I have a degree in like media production, and like if most of the stuff that I know, I like had the base level of knowledge from that, but then I've like learned through trial and error and online things. So, like, yeah. people who are like, oh, I didn't do this, it's like, well, I barely have that, so. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. I've cre- and I have created like one um, one piece of music, mm. um, uh, which was the uh, non-vocal uh, song um, uh, that I created for uh, the the uh, Napoleon video game world that me and a, f- and a friend of mine created. And I created a a piece of music for that on on. God, just on the Garage Band app on the iPad. Yeah, and I've published it. I've published that to YouTube, and I'm. It is messy as hell, but I will always be proud of it. I yeah. do still love it. Yeah, I mean that's that's something as well where it's like you make something, and even at the time, if you know it's messy, you can like look at it and go, "I enjoy this. I like like aspects of this. Yeah. I, I'm happy yeah. that I've done it." I. This is a complete side tangent, but uh, last night. I actually did 
another short film um, competition filming. Yes. Where I in one I did it was a short film. Technically, it's like a sh- you know shot of a monologue. I framed it all well and stuff like that. You know, I went through the whole process of doing it. But that is. I sat down and did the Tomorrow and the Tomorrow speech from Macbeth. And I was like, look, I'm not an actor. I did it six times, and each time I did it slightly differently. Uh, and was like, I'm happy with three of these takes. Um, and then I got it in last night, and I literally finished it last night. I knew what I wanted to do. Um, yeah. It was, you had to make it about streaming in a certain streamer organisation. So I... I decided to just do it that way. I decided to just film it and go address the camera as your Macbeth, like do the monologue like you're doing it to a streamer audience and stuff like that. Oh, what is that noise? <laughs> oh, it is the bloody cry of a woman. I have almost forgotten the taste of fears. The time has been my senses would have cooled to hear such a shriek of my fell of hair, which had a dismal treaty rouse and stir as life were in it. I have soup full of horrors, dianus, familiar with my slaughterous thoughts, cannot once stop me. You ask us, wherefore art thou cry? My lords and ladies, the Queen is dead. She should have died hereafter. There would have been a time for such a word. Tomorrow, and tomorrow, and tomorrow creeps in at this petty pace from day to day to the last syllable of recorded time. And all our yesterdays have lighted fools the way to dusty death. Out, out, reef candle. Life's but a walking shadow. Poor player that struts and frets their hour upon the stage. And then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot. Full of sound and fury. Signifying nothing. Doing that was so interesting because I got to do like certain... It made me realise that acting is really fun. Very much like... But how hard it is as well. I was doing, you know... it had to be under five minutes, and so I had to do five minutes. Very much like what you said about your piece of music, the acting was so messy and, like, yeah. all over the place, but I sort of was able to just realise how fun it could be and how, like, interesting you could play it and, like, go, well, if I do it this way and, you know, shed a tear here or, you know, see if I can cry in here or, you know, laugh here, yeah. like, it changes everything. 
and it's like yeah. so hard to like try a piece of art that you haven't done before or that you like externally but then you step into that role and you go this is so much more complicated than I thought it was yes I, I mean I stand yeah. behind the camera and tell people bigger louder faster like <laughs> <laughs> that's essentially how I see myself do it at working yeah. but like then you know having to sit there and go oh I gotta pull the emotions out to be like remorseful and depressed as I explain stick, stick, that I've done something stick yeah. yourself in the character yeah think what I'm actually what are they feeling? I'm wearing almost the exact same outfit as I did for that because <laughs> um because it looks better on camera it's a sort of more textured instead of a hoodie I'm wearing my uh um uh I'm wearing my denim jacket it looks really textured because I'm shooting in black and white at the moment so it yes. looks a lot more textured and sort of catches the light in certain mm-hmm. ways but yeah I had to think about costuming, like costuming and things like that. Something so crazy and weird. But yeah. yeah. I think... A little I, peek behind the camera there. Yeah. <laughs> behind the curtain. Yeah. I, I think with that peek behind the camera, I think that's me wanting to get back behind the camera. Should we Should we end it now? I feel like... Yeah. I've I said a lot. I do need to go back to my ultimate work of art, which is creating nonsense political chants <laughs> yeah that is that is uh, absolute nonsense um, that no one that no one including you understands no no, no. <laughs> so alright I'm gonna I'm gonna hang up now I will say okay goodbye 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 thank you for the conversation